Well, welcome everyone. I'm so glad you're here. We're very excited to show you um, some sneak peeks at some new products that we actually just released recently at ATIA. Um, Christopher will be on live in just a moment. I'm Kimberly Klein. I'm the Director of Sales for LBI America. And thank you so much for joining us. Um, the screen, I know there's several different people on here today and some have low vision, some have no vision. So I want to try to be very descriptive. The screen that I'm showing on the PowerPoint has an orange sheet of paper and it's peeled back the little like middle part and it says sneak peek right inside where the paper is pulled back in, in bold letters that are all capital. What's new at LBI America? We have an exciting discussion today with myself, Kimberly Klein, and with Christopher Caswell from Sweden. Again, we're so excited you're here. We have some product updates that we're going to be sharing with you, and we'll also be showing you some brand new product. We just got back from ATIA, and it was a very exciting, great conference. If you didn't get the opportunity to go, hopefully you can go next year. It is at a new location, but just the buzz of everybody getting to be out and about again. We had a great presentation to be able to show the products, and then we had a lot of buzz and traffic around our booth. So today we're going to be sharing with you some of the things that we showed at ATIA. The first thing that Christopher will be showing live in just a minute is the new MagnaLink 1 version 3. We will also be showing off the new 24 and 27 inch vision. Christopher has a 27 inch vision today to show you. Um, and I will be focusing on the MagnaLink iTab. The MagnaLink iTab is developed and connects directly to iPads uh, devices via the USB-C port. And we'll talk more about that in just a minute. So the first new product that we're gonna highlight today is the MagnaLink 1.3. The exciting thing to announce is it is a full HD camera. So we've had the MagnaLink 1 out for a while, versions one and two, and they've always been an HD camera. This is a full HD camera. So think of the camera, those of you that are familiar with our product called the Zip, it's the same quality as the Zip camera. Of course, the camera is fixed. It's not where it can move like the Zip camera, but it's just that crisp, crystal clear image, full HD, 1080p. It is still a 17 inch monitor and the magnification goes from 1.4 to 45X magnification. It's 1920 by 1080 camera resolution, and you can get it with or without an integrated XY table. If you get it without an integrated XY table, you can take the uh, removable XY table that we have, the portable one, and you can put it on there, the one that you, that you can use with the zip. So if you're getting it at the time of purchase and you want an integrated XY table, you need to let us know that. That's the oversized XY table. So it comes with or without. Um, the product itself, um, the pricing is on the slide as well. MagnaLink 1 3A, that's with the XY table. Excuse me. Actually, we have these confused. Huh. We'll get this fixed on the slide. With the XY table, it's $29.95. Without the XY table, it's $25.95. I didn't catch that. And we have two people on the slide uh, pictures. One of a lady that's turned around looking at is smiling and she's looking at a book underneath the um, new MagnaLink 1.3. And then the other one, she's in the kitchen and she's got a recipe book underneath it. And um, so that's what's nice about it is it is portable, it's lightweight, it's got the case, you can carry it from room to room. So again, the pricing with XY is $29.95, without XY is $25.95. The next new product we're going to be showing is, or talking about, Christopher has a 27-inch vision there, but we actually have a 24 and a 27-inch vision. Uh, the 24-inch monitor, the magnification goes from 2 to 70x. On the 27-inch monitor, it goes from 2.4 to 85 magnification. You can get it with or without uh, text-to-speech. It's very similar to our other product, meaning if you get it without text-to-speech, you just have the knobs on the front that control it. If you get it with text-to-speech, it has a hand control. Pictured on the screen, we have a lady in the bottom left-hand corner who's 
actually changing the magnification with the center knob. And we'll talk about the panels being a little different and the types of panels. And um, she has a three button knob because that's the new interface that we're using. And then the top picture has a picture of something underneath it with high contrast, black lettering with yellow background. And it has the hand control that we use for TTS. So it's the same hand control we've been using in the past for the 23 inch vision and for also the voice. The pricing for the product, the 24 inch vision without text to speech is $3,445. With text to speech, it's $4,405. If you're um, going to be getting the 27 inch vision without text to speech, it's $3,595. And with text to speech, it's $4,655. The next product that I actually will be featuring today is the Magnalink iTab. Um, we've already had some questions come up and say, well, you guys already have an iPad product. And we do, and we still have that product, and it's a great product. But we've had a lot of requests for people wanting a direct connect camera, very similar to how the tab is, if you're familiar with our tab product. So the Magnalink iTab is portable. It's flexible solution that makes it possible to use the LVI video magnifier with your iPad. Um, this new product is called iTab and it has a stand and a camera. The picture on the bottom left is someone um, actually angling the screen. There's a document underneath it and we actually have the screen split as well because she's also magnifying and looking at the board. And the picture at the top is a classroom setting and the student on the left is sitting at a desk and has the Magnalink iTab, the distance camera pointed to the board. And again, you can use the camera underneath the tab itself, or excuse me, iPad to be um, splitting the screen or just using it full screen if you choose to do so. Uh, the pricing, we sell it for an 11 inch and a 12 inch. Point nine, So 11 and 12.9 for the stand. The stand in camera is uh, $3,695. We don't sell iPads. You would need to have your own iPad. The software is up on the App Store. It's called MagnaLink Viewer, M-A-G-N-I-L-I-N-K Viewer, V-I-E-W-E-R, MagnaLink Viewer. And the software is free. If you have an iPad or an iPhone, you're able to download that um, at any time. If you download the app, you're getting a limited version of the product. You would need to plug it into one of our cameras to get the OCR, the form filling, taking video and pictures, but it still would give you an opportunity to work with the app. Um, so whether you get 11 or 12.9 on the iTab, the price is the same. It's $3,695. And if you just get the standalone and you might say, well, why would I want the standalone? Well, the exciting thing is, is we also work with our other cameras that we have on the market. So if you have a Magnalink S or you have a zip with a connection board or a pro, you would also be able to plug that into the iPad. And if you then wanted to put your iPad in our stand, then you do have the ability just to purchase the stand for the 11 inch or the 12.9. The pricing on that is $1,895. Since, as I mentioned, you're able to take an MLS and plug it, um, the camera directly into the iPad, we are also offering a bundle to where if you wanna purchase an MLS, and the stand for an 11 or 12.9, we offering a bundle price and the price for that is 5,590. Now I do wanna talk about the type of iPad that you have to have, because when we first released our iPad product, the Magnalink Wi-Fi and the Magnalink Wi-Fi Cam, we supported any iPad that supported iOS 15 or higher. So that went back quite a few years on iPads. For the Direct Connect iPads solution, you do have to have a specific iPad. First of all, it has to have a USB-C connection and it has to be able to support iOS 17 or higher. So that is some of the newer iPads. We do support iPad Pro 11 inch and 12.9 and iPad Air 11. 
So those are the types of iPads you would need to have. AirPad, excuse me, iPad Pro 11, iPad Pro 12.9, or iPad Air 11. The iPad, again, devices are sold separately, but the reason you have to have those iPads, again, they have to have a USB-C connection. They have to be powerful enough to power the camera, and you also have to be able to use the latest version of the software, iOS 17 or higher. It does have an ergonomic tiltable stand. Again, those of you that are familiar with our tab product, the stand is exactly the same. It does have an extra connector that enables charging of the iPad. And it also has, um, you can directly connect, as I mentioned, um, other things. So if you wanted to charge your phone or other things like that, the hub has the ability to plug in two different things. You can purchase a stand only, as I mentioned, if you want to use it with the Magnolink S, the Zip, or the Pro. If you are using it with a Zip, remember the Zip has to have a connection board. And with the S, it has to be with the newer style S's, anything basically manufactured November 2021 or later. So it does go back quite a few years. All right, Christopher, we are going to go live to you, but there's a couple things in the chat. Um, can you let me know if you were able to answer those questions that are in the chat? Okay, let me take a look here. Um, there is a comment saying that all prices are in US dollars. Thank you. Yes, I meant to say that earlier. And you guys, we're just giving prices because we knew that it would come up. We realized that you're purchasing through a reseller and um, the price, as, as we said, is in US dollars. So if anyone's on from Canada, please know that this is US pricing. And there is a question, uh, can you use different iPad models with this? And I think you just covered that. Right, so if you're using the Direct Connect iTab, it has to be iPad Pro 11 or iPad Pro 12.9 or iPad Air 11. Any other questions on that, Christopher? No, that seems to be it for now. Okay, and the pictures on this slide, there is a student sitting at a desk with the screen split, again, using the distance camera and using the camera that's on the iPad. And the bottom picture is someone using the Magnalink S directly connected into the iPad. All right, so I'm gonna stop my share and I'm gonna spotlight on you. Okay, you should be spotlighted. Looks like that. Okay, thank you, Kimberly. Thank you for the introduction and all that information. And hello, everyone. Christopher Caswell from the mothership here in Sweden. And I just came back yesterday afternoon from Florida and the ATIA conference, as you mentioned, Kimberly. Um, so you have covered a lot of facts and specifications, and I will take you on a deeper look on the products themselves. And I have prepared the Magnalink 1.3 here with an integrated XY table. And behind me, I also have the Magnalink Vision with a 27 inch screen that I will take up on this, this little lazy Susie a bit later. Uh, I am holding a remote control and that is to control the camera where you are at. So it has nothing to do with the products I'm showing just to make that clear. The Magnalink 1.3, as Kimberly mentioned, is an, a major update we recently did and we just came out with where we went from an HD screen element and an HD camera to full HD on both. So it's now a full HD unit and the image quality has increased a lot thanks to that. We're now even more proud of this product. And it's a product that as I go here, um, you will see and learn that it's a product that's kind of in between a desktop traditional video magnifier towards a foldable, more movable slash lower footprint type of video magnifier. Kimberly mentioned it comes in a 17.3 inch monitor. 
you have all the function buttons in the front underneath the, the screen. If I take my little lazy Susie, I just learned that word in the and, and Christopher, it's lazy Susan. Susan, thank you. We can't call her Susie. We can't give her a nickname. <laughs> okay, so let's continue with lazy Susan then. Thank you for helping me. You just learned me that word and now you have to correct me already. That's okay. Uh, so I took the Megalink one on a, on a little spin here, 45 degrees, where we can now see it from the side. So you can see if I have you come in a little closer to it. <clears throat> you can see it being very thin. It's a lightweight device. I can easily lift it up and it's even more lightweight when I have the version without the XY table. I could either be in front of the device or as I'm now behind the device to collapse it really easily. So what, what it has is two main parts. It's got the screen part and it has the main arm part. So I start by in this case, pulling the, since I'm behind the unit, I'm pulling the screen towards me. So it's kind of in line with the main arm. If I were in front of the device, I will obviously push the monitor to be in line with the arm. So let's do that now. So I just pushed it. No, I just pulled it towards the arm. And now I'm ready to just push the whole upper part of the product down. And that's how flat it becomes. Now I could either move it as it is to another room or wherever I'm going, or preferably I can put it in the carrying case that comes with the device. Hard size, so it stands up if I put, put it down. It's also protecting the unit very well. It's orange and black in contrast, both on the zippers, but also on the inside. See if I can open it here. Oh, I got some foaming in here, but it's orange and black to give contrasts. It has a shoulder strap and a handle. So that's a good way to move the product with me, especially if I'm bringing the product with me when I'm leaving my home, for example. Okay, let's turn it towards you again, the product, and let's open it. So same thing, but the opposite. I start by pulling the whole product up or the upper part of the product, and then I can come up with the monitor and I can be in almost any angle here. I can be really down. I can have the monitor very high and I can angle the monitor almost anywhere I want. Before I take you closer to the functions of the product, I can also, I think you mentioned Kimberly during your presentation here that you can order this unit with or without the XY table. If you order without the XY table, there is a portable XY table option where you simply have a smaller portable XY table that you just slide in. It will be held in the back by two tabs on the product. And then you have a fully functioning XY table that goes in both directions, also with friction brakes. On this webinar demonstration, I have the product with the integrated XY table, which is, which is larger. So that's preferably the choice if I know I will be reading a lot, and especially if I'm reading something that's a bit larger, newspaper, magazine, or larger books or objects. It has friction brakes and locks in both directions. So now it's open. I can nicely slide the XY table and follow the movements on the screen as I'd like. If I add a little friction, it will be a bit more sturdy when I move it. If we come in a little closer to the product and the screen, that should be nice. Um, as I said before, I don't have a lot of I have no functions or buttons hidden on this product. 
and there's only a few buttons available where I start from the left on this panel that's mounted underneath the screen. I have an on off, that's a push button. I continue to the center, the middle of this panel where I have my zoom. So if I turn, I will magnify. If I press just one quick press, it takes me to what we call an overview mode. So it's easier for me to navigate and see approximately where I'm at from the center of the screen. I press to go back to the magnification I just had. If I do a long press, three seconds, and release, the on-off button starts flashing in kind of an orange color instead of being constant green. That means I have now turned off out of focus. So now we have out of focus off, and that could be useful for example, doing writing. I do the same to take back or to turn off turn on out of focus by press and hold for about three seconds. I continue on further on the right on the panel. Between two tur orange turning knobs, I have two black tactile buttons. The one on the right will take me through a cycle of high contrast colors, artificial colors. When I've found an artificial color that I prefer, I can adjust the contrast with the turning knob on the right, and then I can continue to read the text. The button on the left between the two turning knobs will quickly take me back to natural color. It remembers the last used high contrast, so it's easy for me, easy for me to go back and forth. Let's say I'm reading a magazine where there is about half text and half pictures. I may use this to go back and forth, to look at the pictures in color and the text in my artificial high contrast. The turning knob on the right, which is the last button I have on this product, when I turn, I'm adjusting the brightness and contrast. If I press and hold, I'm adding a um, four different lines and masking. The on-off comes constant orange-ish. And I have now added horizontal line, vertical line, or the same but in masking. I can adjust where I want the line or how big or small the masking should be. And then I press and hold on the same knob and it will remains like, remain like that. The on off button comes out in, and goes back to constant green again to show me that I'm out of that function. It will also automatically jump out in, after a few seconds. To turn off the masking in this case, I go back in again and I just go to where it's where there's no line or masking and I'm back to normal. So Kimberly, is there anything you'd like to add before I go over to the other product? I think that's a, an overview of this simple but movable high quality product. So Christopher, I just want to address a couple of questions. Um, something came up about the case. They wanted to make sure there was plenty of room in the case for the cord because this does have to be plugged in. It does not have a battery. And yes, all of our carrying cases have room for the, um, the cord or the cable for everything for charging. So this does require a battery. And then someone asked about how much it weighs. Without an XY table, it's 7.7 .7 pounds. If you add the XY table, it does add quite a bit of weight to it. Um, it's 11.2. So it's, it is heavier, but it has that beauty of having that oversized XY table if, um, if that's something that you're going to need. The great thing is, is even with the integrated XY table, it folds down and you can carry it so it's totally portable. I think that's all the questions so far, Christopher. Okay, we can always come back if there if there is more coming. 
So what I'm doing now is I will take away that product and I will come up with the next product on my Lacey Susan. So let's see, where is my remote? I will have you coming out a little bit and we'll start from the beginning again. So the next product is bigger. That's the Megalink Vision that, that's now offered in a 24 inch and in this case, a 27 inch that I have next to me here now. We, now I'll start doing this. I will take you on a spin again. So you can see the whole product from the side and kind of from the back. It has a large integrated, nicely moving XY table, friction brakes in both directions. You can lock them. You can lock the table if you wish. The new screens we're using are much thinner and the screen comes out almost all the way to the edges. So it gives it a very modern look and yet keeps the quality. On, on this, I'll turn around again. There is two lamps on this product, one on each side behind the monitor. Those lamps are held via arms and those arms can be used successfully to lift the product. This is a heavier product than the previous one we looked at. This one is just below 30 pounds. So I need to add a little bit more of my biceps here, but it's still more or less movable. Can you try to show the two handles in the back, Christopher, where you could pick it up with the two handles? Yeah, okay. That lazy Susan's getting a workout today. She is, and I'm I'm looking to see I'm not causing any issues on the cord. So it's it's kind of tall for me now, as you can probably see. I got my face. Oh, in front because of that because of the lazy Susan. Yeah, it's up so because high. Because of the lazy Susan, the bar table. But that's okay. I'll can I can demonstrate anyway. Show so, off your muscles. <laughs> so I can hold it on both of those arms and I can easily lift it up. And I made a mistake. I should have locked the X-ray table, so that's not flying around. And then it's quite easy for me to... You get my... comments like, oh, look at Christopher just lifted that up like nothing, I tell you. Well, I, made my... I did my best to look good on that one, that's for sure. <laughs> Holding my breath and all that. Um, before we jump into the functions of this device, uh, I can also mention that the monitor can go up and down, so you can have it coming up quite high. And of course, you can also tilt it quite a bit. So if you were about to use this for a, when you were standing up in front of it or something like that, you can tilt and play with the monitor up and down. Okay. I will do it like this. We'll come in a bit closer here. That was probably a little too far. There we go. <clears throat> There's a lot of ask for simplicity on a product like this. And we are offering this device with what we call a three knob panel. It's a, the, the function panel mounted the same as on the previous product, underneath the screen. You got the on off on the left, you turn it on, you turn it off. In the middle, there is a large, they are all tactile, there is a large, larger knob where I do minus, I lower the magnification if I go left, and I increase the magnification if I go right. And as Kimberly said before, I can do all the way up to 85 times magnification. On my right, I have another knob when it's pointing straight up. It's in natural color, which is, which is where I have it right now. But I can adjust 
again as the same same as this previous product and i can add artificial colors by turning them up if i go left i'll have the darker background and in this case black background with white text i can go one more step left and i'll have black background with yellow text if i go back again all the way up i go to natural and if i go one click to the right it gives me white background with black text and one more step right yellow background with black text that's how simple this is um, the three knob panel i will come in in the picture with another style of panel it's a what we call five push panel that's an accessory that we will be selling uh, for those who are looking for a specific function that's not available on the three knob and quickly to go over it on the left so the, the, the main difference is that I, I have more functions on the five push but there are press buttons so i need to push these the three knob has less functions less features and i turn the knobs on the push button where there is more functions available i have starting from the left the on off so i push to start and push to sh shut down the system next i have an up and a down button that they're all tactile that's adjusting the brightness next is one button with that's turning on and off the autofocus next is a big plus that's orange and a big minus underneath so there is two buttons where plus magnifies and minus decrease the magnification next i have a pair where i'm adding reference lines horizontal and vertical and masking horizontal and vertical and i can adjust where the line should be or how much the masking should be and all the way on the right, I have two buttons that are the same as on the previous product, the two black buttons, where the one on the right takes me through a cycle of different high contrast colors, and the one on the left quickly takes me to natural color. So that's an option for this device, but as default, we'll sell it with the three knob, where it's on off, magnification, and four variants of high contrast colors. And this is the more popular panel looking at our statistics because it's so simple. Kimberly mentioned that this device can also be ordered with text to speech. That's when the, the device is reading text out loud for you if you so prefer. That's not available on the previous product, the Maglink 1.3 but that is available on this device. You need to order it with text-to-speech from the beginning. It cannot be added afterwards because there is a lot of things that differs inside of the unit. Speakers, other, other electronics, etc. Externally, there is only one difference that you will notice, and that is that it has an external remote control. This remote control will control all your text-to-speech related functions. The unit I have next to me here is not with text-to-speech because we thought we didn't have the time to go over that today. Uh, there is quite a few features in there. But Kimberly, before we end this webinar, will explain and tell you when our next upcoming webinars are scheduled. And there is one including a deeper look into this specific device with the text-to-speech but we have made it if i just go over quickly the um, overview we've made it with two let's say user profile one we call simple and one we call advanced mode so the user can choose or who's setting up the device with the user can choose if it should be in simple where there is no menu where to get lost it's only very straightforward a few functions available hit the orange button in the bottom and it will scan and read for you. Pause and play, change reading speed, change volume. That's basically all you can do. do. In the advanced mode, you're also adding a menu where you get access to more functions.
functions. Kimberly, can you see if there are any questions or anything you'd like to add to this before you take over with the I tab? Absolutely. First of all, there's several, there's quite a few questions. So let me try to cover those. Um, I tried to type some of the answers in, but I'll just go ahead and verbalize them because I, I now notice that not everyone's seen the question. So I'll verbalize them. So I'm going to go back to the MagnaLink 1 version 3 because there were a couple questions on that. Yes, you can put the cable in the charging case. We talked about that, but then someone's asking about a rechargeable version. We don't have a rechargeable version. It's battery only. So you do have to use a battery. Wanted to make sure everyone knew that. Okay, now coming to the, um, the vision. Someone's asking a really good question. How, ser how serviceable is the moving tables? Like if something were to happen or break on it, they currently bought a different product from another manufacturer and um, they went to something broke on that table and um, they had to, it wasn't able to be repaired. And so they're concerned about the repairing of that unit. So we have a service center in the US and we have a service center in Canada. And if there were something to happen to the XY table, if the friction brake were to break or something like that, yes, it can be fixed. They have all the parts and everything can be fixed with that. So that was a great question. I, I can, I'd like to add uh, one thing there, Kimberly. Uh, our XY table is, Designed with, we call it two plates. That means you have obviously the main plate where the document or the object is placed up on, where you also have a kind of a gray sticker that gives us a nice non-slippery surface, etc. Behind that, there is a second plate, and this plate is there mainly to protect most parts, of, most most of the moving parts of the XY table, so they are hidden from getting dirt, dust food, whatever you may spill there. Um, if you for still need to, to service this the, this XY table, I don't know if it's visible, but I'm pointing on a couple of screws here. All screws on for the XY table is very visible. So it's quite, quite un, depending on who you are and your background, of course, but it's quite service friendly. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Christopher. And like I said, if you do need to send it in, they have all the parts and everything can be fixed as well. So you wouldn't have to get a new unit or, you know, of course, depending on the damage of the unit, but if it's just a break or something like that on the XY table, it can be fixed. Okay, now back to the panels that Christopher showed, because there's quite a few questions on this panels. So can you purchase just the panel separately? So yes, if you currently have a vision, and it has the knobs and you want the five button push, you could do that. If you have a vision and it has the five button push and you wanna order the knob panel, yes, you can do that. So yes, the panels can be purchased separately from the reseller that you purchased the unit from. Uh, we do have them in stock. And um, so if you do want to purchase the panels, yes. The main reason you're purchasing the panel, if you're wanting the five button push, is because you're wanting to add the other features. You're wanting to add contrast control. You're wanting to add line masking. You're wanting to add all the high contrast colors and not just have the um, ones that Christopher showed you. Okay, I'm trying to go down it. So someone said, if I buy it with the three buttons, can I change my mind and want to put the five button? Um, you can add, yes, you can order a front panel. It can be switched out very, very simply. It's something that um, the reseller that you purchased it from can do that for you. But yes, you can do that as well. Um, someone's asking, can you add colors to the three knob? So Christopher, on the three knob, they're asking the high contrast colors that are there, yellow, black, black, yellow, white white on black, black on white, they want to know, can any colors be added? The answer is no. Okay, that again would be a reason that you'd want to go with the five button push panel. Um, someone's saying, do I mean the, that the MagnaLink one is battery only? Yes, battery only on both of these units, the Vision and the MagnaLink one, they both have to be plugged in. Yeah, so you, you mean, I, I was a little confused, but you mean 
they are both powered via the the wall outlet. There That's is no correct. I Meaning people are wanting rechargeable. They're not rechargeable. You have to plug them in. None of these are. They correct. both need to be plugged in. Um, okay. More questions keep popping up. Trying to get to the bottom of the questions. We answered that. Okay, so no, the but then the the panel in the front is not allowing you to add OCR. It's just for the video. So if you're gonna get the unit with OCR, you have to purchase it at the time of when you buy it. You either get it with or without OCR. The panel that's coming on it right now are the three knobs. The only thing that the panel does is open up other features for the, the viewing of it, not OCR. Very good. I don't have a lazy Susie or a lazy Susan. So I don't have all that fancy stuff here in my house. So I'm going to show you the case and a few things about the product. And then I'm going to be just a second and then I'll pop up, take the case away and bring the, the product up. Um, so this is the case that we use for the, you got, this case looks pretty familiar probably to you, but it's the same case that we use for the Magnolia Guest. It's the same case we use for the voice. It's the same case we use for the tab. And now we use this case for the iTab. So it's a case that's got a handle. It has the orange pull ties that Christopher talked about. And if I were to open the case, and take the unit out, you can see how smooth it is. There's a handle to hold the unit, but it's very, very thin and smooth. And inside the case, is the actual camera that I'm going to take out and plug in. So it's the camera that you've seen before, the camera that we use with the tab. The iTab looks just like the tab, except there are a few additional features. Yeah. In Q&A, we have, good afternoon. Can the attachable XY table be compatible with the Manlink 1, 2? Um, yes and no. Um, the, the, the one to got an update, a small minor update during its lifespan where we added those two tabs that are in the back of the of the base holding the removable XY table. So if you would send in your the serial number of that unit uh, to Kimberly and you will get her contact info after the webinar or at the end of the webinar, we can find out which version you have. Great. Okay. So you now are looking at the iTab setup. And if you're looking at it, you kind of go, wow, it looks just like the tab. And here we have a iPad versus a Surface Pro tablet. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the de device, but I want to let you know, we have a webinar next month where I'm going to be spending a whole hour on this device and also using a plugin directly with an MLS. So um, again, we only have so much time today to cover the products. We're here to give you an overview. So I'm gonna talk about the device, talk about the different things that are on it, and then zoom in on the screen and show you how easy it is to use. So you can see that there's an orange tab right here. And I'm sorry for those of you I shouldn't have said that you can see, because I know there's several people on here that cannot see that orange tab. So if I'm facing the eye tab on the left-hand side, there's a cable with an orange pull tie on it. And if I pull that out, that unplugs the hub. So this is a little bit different than the tablet. We actually have a hub um, on this unit for several reasons. And we'll talk more about that in just a minute. That hub is on the back of the unit. And on that hub, there's two USB-C ports. So you can use that to be able to charge the iPad while you're using it. So it's wonderful that we can plug a camera into an iPad, but we also need to realize that that takes a lot of power from the iPad. So if you did not have it plugged in while you're using it, it's gonna go for about an hour and a half, but it's gonna drain the battery. So we do give you the hub to where you can plug it in and be able to use it as long as you have it plugged in. Now, we don't just put the hub on there. We actually, Christopher, talk a little bit about the chargers that we're sending. 
<laughs> so when you're when you're using the device and it's, its external camera, you need to use a minimum 20 watts charger. That that's minimum what you need in order to to get battery level versus continue to drain out the battery, even though it's charging. So minimum 20 watt, but we are including with the product a 65 watts charger. And the reason for that, and the reason why it's so high in watts is because in the hub that's hidden inside of the stand, there is a one available USB-C port that can be used for keyboard and mouse or a USB flash drive or, and of course, to charge an external electronic such as your smartphone. And in order to run the camera, the, the iPad and charge your phone, you need more power that's coming in. And we did, we noticed that 65 watts was, was a perfect size for that task. Excellent, thank you. So the cable again, facing the unit straight on, the cable that my hand is on, which is on the right-hand side that's plugged into the USB-C, that's the charger. And then I have that plugged in to power on the floor. And so I've got using the charger that we send with it. The camera is actually plugged into the top of the USB hub. That's where there's two USB-Cs and you, I've got the camera plugged in there. And again, that's where Christopher said, if you want to plug your phone in, or if you had a um, something, anything that's USB, even if you had like one of our NARAs, anything you want to charge USB-C, you can do that because that's what that hub is for. Okay, I'm going to zoom all the way in. Please tell me if that's good and close, Christopher. Yeah, that, that's good. Okay, and let me put my paper that I wanted to put there. Okay, so we have the distance camera, which you could see us a little bit ago, and that's the camera I'm using right now to look at a form. I'm gonna take that distance camera and I'm gonna flip it and go across the room. So you can see you've got a nice clear picture and image of a painting that we have, or it's not a painting, a picture on the wall. And now I'm going to actually come around to a document that I put on the wall. And we're going to zoom in on that document. So that's the distance camera. The distance camera can do document, distance, and self-viewing, just like it can on the tab and just like it can with our Zip product. There's three different angles you can have that distance camera. Let's talk about the interface at the bottom of the screen. It looks very similar to the software that you've used before with the tab. The first button takes you back and forth between OCR and Live View. The second button, which has two cameras and a crooked arrow, is going to take you back and forth between your cameras. So now I'm using the camera actually that's on the um, Surface Pro tablet. And now I'm going to go back to the distance camera. You can split the screen and be looking at both of them at the same time. But right now I have them in full view where you're just seeing the full view of one camera or the full view of the other camera. The third button over looks like a piece of paper with a line through it. That is where you can go in and split the view. And we're going to come back to that in just a minute. I'm back looking with the distance camera across the room. I'm going to hit plus to make it even larger. So what I want you to know is it is a very crisp and clean image from where I'm sitting. I'm thinking it's about 10 feet across the room right now that I'm looking at the document on the wall. So yes, I can do OCR. I can change colors. I can do anything with that document as if I was even using it, just looking at it down as a document versus across the room. The next button over is plus and my, or excuse me, minus then plus. Then we have OCR. The um, six button over is a, has a picture of a camera and a video camera. So if I were to go in there, I have the ability to take a picture. It has a pop-up menu that comes up. 
and um, you can take a picture, you can do video, or you can fill out a form. And we'll come back to that in just a minute. And then the last one takes you into settings. The settings are a little bit different than maybe if you've used the software before with the MagnaLink Wi-Fi cam, because the options are slightly different. Right now I've got camera and we have it to where we have it on the default, which is to have the iPad camera on. You can go into the about that shows the version of the software that I'm using, which is 2.5. If you don't have the latest version of our software, please go and get that from the app store. All of the updates are free. You can also go into application, camera, speech, gestures, where all the gestures are. You can turn them on and off, shortcuts. You can see what the shortcuts are and then the end user configuration. This product and any of our iPad products is a little different. We do allow you to change the color for the OCR, meaning if from when you're doing OCR, if you only want it to be white on black, black on white, when you're looking at the text, you could turn everything else off. You can customize the front camera, the rear camera, and the um, tab camera, the distance camera. So it's very customizable for all of those different features. All right, so I'm gonna come back and go into where you split the screen. So I'm gonna pick that I wanna split the screen. And now I'm looking at, I'm gonna put this text over here a little bit further and move it up just a little bit. I'm now looking at the document underneath the iPad camera and I'm looking across the room at the same time. You do have the ability to change the split and I'm just touching the icon with the left arrow or change the split more over on the right-hand side. You can also split it uh, going across horizontally versus vertically. And you could say, I want the distance camera to be on the left and the tab camera, the iPad camera, I should say, on the right. And same thing with horizontally going back and forth. And then you have the ability to go back to full camera from here as well. Then I'm looking at full camera at the document underneath. And if I hit it one more time, then I'm looking across the room, which I'm gonna shrink it down because I've got it way big. So you can split the screen and be using both cameras at one time. To um, show off how crystal clear it is, I'm gonna go ahead and do OCR from across the room. I shrink it down just a bit. And now I'm going to hit OCR. Compact solution for iPad Manny link it is developed for infinite. Yes, it's fast. I when I was at the conference, people said that was the fastest OCR they had ever seen. So yes, it is extremely fast, and it did a really great job on that document across the room. When you're doing OCR, you have the ability, of course, to change the colors. This is where I said you could customize the colors to only have certain color combinations or you can also choose which color combination is best for you. You of course can change the contrast on it as well to brighter and or darker, and you can go in and change the view. So I'm looking at it one word, I can make that word bigger by hitting the, um, the A. I don't have it turned on right now, but I could turn on voiceover. We do work with voiceover. So I know that question's probably gonna come up. I will have that as um, something that will cover more when I spend the entire hour on the software and the, the program. And I'll be comparing the MagnaLink Wi-Fi to the MagnaLink Wi-Fi cam, et cetera. Krista, are there any questions before I go a couple more minutes? Cause then we're gonna have to go back to the closing slides. Oh, sorry, I was muted. Um, there is one saying, can you split the screen between the LVI software and other programs on the iPad? And the answer is yes. Yes, you can. Great question. So now I'm looking at the camera and you, if you wanted to, again, you guys were looking at a camera with the iPad. So the camera is in the bottom right-hand corner. So you do get a little bit of a, a I, I call that the Star Wars look, that, that far, far away look. So you'd have to actually lift up the actual iPad if you're wanting not to have that because that's going to make the camera be more straight up. And then if I put it down, again, you're going to be able to have that angle. 
there's just no way around that because of the fact the iPad camera is in the bottom of the iPad. Come down a little bit. I could do OCR with this camera the same. I'm gonna come out, I can make it larger, smaller. I also, of course, can change the colors to all the different contrasts. I'm gonna go back to full color. I'm gonna go back down. And of course, I could do OCR. Thank you for choosing, then you've made a great choice. Let us development and construction your new video magnifier. I'm gonna stop it. So anything you can do with the distance camera, you also can do with the camera on the iPad. I didn't show you this, but you also could do forward facing camera as well. So I'm gonna come back to live view. And then if I come in here, I can say the split screen area, I can say I want the forward camera. So now you're using the forward camera on the iPad. Hello everybody. And um, you have the ability to split it to the back facing camera or the forward facing camera or of course the distance camera. All right, I'm gonna pause for a second for questions and then I'm gonna to go to the closing slide. So Christopher, are there questions? Uh, there is one asking if there is no angle correction. I We do not have angle correction that I'm seeing in the software, Christopher. Am I missing something? No, you're right. And there is another question asking, go back to the battery life, please. What's the expected continuous use battery life? That sounded way too short. Do you want to address that, Christopher? Because it is- Yeah, sure. So, so in continuous use, it's an hour and a half for the iPad battery to run this solution. But that's why we, added this hub integrated in the stand so that you can charge the device while it's in use. So you have as long battery as you want. All right, I'm sharing my screen. Is that now showing on the screen? You are showing the PowerPoint. Okay, very good. Looks like there's a couple things popping up. Uh, someone is asking, can the TTS speed of reading be changed to slower? Yes. Yep, you can change the speed as um, whatever you want. And you can also change the voice as well. Okay, I'm back to our PowerPoint. And I do want to talk about our webinars. We already have scheduled our webinar. Where we'll be focusing an hour just on the iTab. It'll be the iTab, MagnaLink Wi-Fi, and MagnaLink Wi-Fi Cam. It'll be comparing all of the iPad solutions that we have, and it'll be more of a deeper dive. This webinar is February 27th. It's on a Tuesday. It's at 1 o'clock Eastern time. And uh, this webinar, we are offering ACB REPs. We'll have some learning objectives for you to learn um, as we go through the different options with the iPad solutions, because different options are gonna be you know, better for different um, age groups, also different people, and depending on what they're using it for. Some people want the Wi-Fi cam solution because they want it wireless. They wanna be able to have the iPad on their desk and the device somewhere else. I always say they're too cool for school, meaning that they don't want to have the whole device on their desk. But there's a lot of people that really like the Direct Connect. Um, the, some of the benefits of that is Direct Connect is always a little bit faster than a wireless connection. So there's all types of things I'll be covering during that webinar. That link is up on our website today. Feel free to go and register. It's www.lviamerica.com forward slash webinar. Thank you so much for coming today. Uh, we'll stay after at the end if there's more questions. Um, Christopher, thank you for joining us from Sweden. I know you're just getting back from um, ATIA, and I really appreciate you taking the time to stay there extra. Um, you can reach Christopher. I only have his email because I didn't think you probably want to call Sweden. So his email is Christopher, C-H-R-I-S-T-O-F-E-R dot Caswell, C-A-S-S-W-A-L-L at lvi.se. I'm Kimberly, Kimberly 
Klein, and it's Kimberly.Klein at LBIAmerica.com. And you can also contact me on my cell phone via um, text or call me, or you can email me. If you're calling me or texting me, it's 702-468-6611. So again, 702-468-6611. And if you need to reach out to Catherine, um, it's Catherine Trombley. It's C-A-T-H-E-R-I-N-E dot Trombley, T-R-O-M-B-L-E-Y at lviamerica.com. Or you can also call or text her at 802-236-4404. Um, thank you so much for joining. Is there any other questions? I don't see any more questions, no.